and I'm a PhD candidate and it's in concrete materials. My favorite type of food is anything and everything except spicy food. I do not like that. My field of research is in, um, well, concrete materials is the I guess, macroscopic look at it, but I'm more focused on the aggregate part of it um, and trying to optimize the packing of the aggregate so that it can be more sustainable. The official title is Optimization of Aggregate Gradation Combinations to Improve Concrete Sustainability and Durability. So what that really means is that I'm trying to optimize the packing of the aggregates. The whole point of that is to reduce the cement pace so um, that you don't need as much cement. And the cement industry uh, it accounts for 5% of global CO2 emissions. So if we can reduce the amount of cement that's actually required in concrete, then therefore it'll be more sustainable. So hopefully we can get towards that with this research. And also um, trying to put waste aggregate material back into the concrete as well. So that's from another sustainable point of view when it comes to like the quarries. The optimization techniques I'll be using, they're all existing. Um, and they've been developed in the US and also in Europe. And it's been developed in Canada. Um, but it's kind of like the Shillstone's courses back in the chart. They'll be using um, the power chart, which is used in the apple industry. Um, I'm going to apply it to concrete, though. And also uh, some theoretical part of the packing models that we've developed in Europe as well. The process for making the concrete that I'm making is uh, I have a bunch of different aggregate samples. So I've got a gravel and a crushed limestone. Um, and then the waste material has chip and screenings. And uh, for the sand part, I just have like a natural sand. Um, and what I do is I'll just get different combinations out of those, and then I'll make concrete out of it. Um, and put that all into the mixer, mix it together, and then I do a bunch of fresh property tests, which include the slump test. Uh, I'm looking at ray electrical properties as well, so yield stress and level viscosity. Um, and also air content as well. Um, and then once I do that, then I will actually cast the concrete in cylinders for compressive strength testing, uh, prisms for shrinkage testing, and also um, cylinders are also used for permeability testing too. So this room is the uh, where we store our prisms for the shrinkage test. It's just 50% relative humidity and set room temperature. So it's pretty, uh, Days, so three months, and just at periodic days, I will uh, do the testing for the three things: the compressive strength, the shrinkage, and then the permeability test. So this is what the prisms look like for the shrinkage test. Um, this, yeah, they have studs in the ends, like here, that you put in a comparator machine, and then you measure the length change of them from initial length change after you pass them. Um, and so you can see as time goes by, how much has the linear length changed, like the long longitudinal length has changed. Why well, concrete? Because it's the most used building material and it's pretty cool, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of chemistry behind it too, so it's a good crossover between civil and chemical engineering, I think. UT has a lot to offer with, we have a lot of opportunities going on for graduate students. Um, especially in concrete materials, so it was the right fit for me from the start with my master's.